Tesla is stockpiling 4680 battery structural packs. That means the battery and the actual structural part itself. Why are they doing this? It's happening at Gigafactory Texas. Frankly, I'm a bit baffled by this. I'm going to give you my take on why I think it's happening. And then I'm going to look at what is going on also at Tesla's Gigafactory in Fremont. Something has just happened, which to be honest, no one seems to be talking about. I find that kind of strange, but it's a very important milestone for Tesla. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel, I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Wonderful to have you. Welcome back, everyone else. Thank you to our Patreon supporters. Could not do this without you. You know that. I've said this so many times. Thank you so very much for supporting us. Really, really, this channel wouldn't be wouldn't be here without you guys. So basically, the existence of this channel, Patreon supporters, and and I need to mention also our members, YouTube members. We have members on this channel. I'll put a link in the description below to our YouTube members page. Now, if you want to be a YouTube member, you pay a little bit of money and you get access to our videos, to some of our videos, a few days before everyone else. And it basically supports the channel as well. And thank you to you guys as well. I don't mention you guys enough, and I should. Tesla right now in the parking lot, strangely, there is a whole bunch of structural 4680 battery packs. And no one seems to know why that is the case. Now, Stephen Loveday has said that based on recent drone fly of a video footage shared by Joe on YouTube, Joe Tagmeyer, I think that's how you pronounce his name, Tesla is sitting on a growing number of its new 4680 structural battery packs at Giga Texas. They might be doing the same at Fremont soon as well. The company is continuing to stockpile the packs. And while the output is a good thing, it's bizarre. Why are they doing it? Why aren't those packs going into cars? I think that's a really good question. And it is really weird considering the crazy demand right now for Tesla Model Y vehicles in the United States in particular, where these cars are going, it doesn't really seem to make sense that these packs are being stockpiled. Tesla is using new structural packs for the Model Y crossovers coming out of the new factory in Texas. However, no one actually knows how many of the Model Ys coming out of Gigafactory Texas are coming with these structural battery packs. Why doesn't anyone know? Well, the reason is because Tesla doesn't report the figures, number one. Number two, they now have two different battery chemistries coming out of that factory. They have 2170s and 4680 battery cells. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying they're producing those batteries there. They will be. Of course, they need to build their battery facility there. So they're not making the battery cells there yet, but they will be. So they're putting the batteries in the cars there. They have two different production lines. They have 2170s, they have 4680s. And then for some reason, they're taking these 4680 cells and the structural packs and stockpiling them outside. As you can see in this video, there's a sea of tall stacks in what looks like a massive storage area on one of the factory's upper floors. So it is possible Tesla is just putting them there until the cars are ready. But I mean, realistically, you would think, right, Tesla could make more than enough cars to supply, to not be stockpiling these battery packs and having them sitting there just waiting to go in a car. So is the key issue here, could it be not enough chips? Is there a chip shortage affecting the cars? Is there something else, some sort of hold on the vehicles? Is there some kind of issue with the batteries? Is Tesla doing more testing on them? No one actually seems to know. I've done lots of Googling. I've tried to find out what's going on. But all I can say is this does prove one thing, one very important thing. It does look as though Tesla has increased production of 4680 cells. This kind of gives us an idea of the production quantity of 4680 cells. And obviously, no one else is producing 4680s right now. They do plan on doing so because BMW said that they want to use the 4680 size cell. So of other car companies, Neo as well said they're going to use them. But the reality is no one makes them right now outside of Tesla. Now Panasonic are planning on making them as well. You know, Samsung are saying they're going to do it too. So are some other car companies. So are some other battery companies, but no one does it. 
So we get an idea. We're getting starting to get an idea that Tesla is really starting to ramp up 4680 production, but it still doesn't give us the reason for why these packs are sitting there. So if any of you know, if any of you are staff and you work at Tesla, please let us know in the comment section below. Maybe you actually have some inside information. Now, someone has told me it's batching. They're just batching 2170s and 4680s, and this is how it works. This is a normal part of making the cars, but I don't think it is. I'm not convinced that that's correct. But I do know one other bit of information which supports this idea that they are ramping up 4680 battery cell production at Tesla, that it's going really well, that they're maybe getting less defective cells than what they used to in the past, which is the fact that Tesla has now just gotten, Tesla has just filed to build EV batteries on new production lines at its Fremont factory. Now, obviously, these are not going to be for 2170s. Obviously, Tesla's producing 4680s at its Fremont factory in addition to Cato Road. So it's going to be producing now a new battery line at Fremont. Now, I don't know where it's gotten the storage for or the space to be able to build this new battery line, but it's happening. Now, Tesla has filed to build a new battery manufacturing equipment line at Fremont factory in Northern California, according to a variety of sources, including Tesla Rati. The factory which Tesla purchased in 2010 for a song, for a dollar, they purchased it for a very, very low sum of money compared to what it would cost to build. That said, the factory is not really ideal as an manufacturing plant. Tesla have kind of produced lemonade out of lemons here with this factory, meaning, what do I mean by that? Well, it's the most productive automotive factory in the United States, even though it really wasn't purpose-built to do what Tesla needed. Now, for those of you new to Tesla, Tesla's Fremont factory has not produced batteries before. The batteries are produced at Gigafactory Nevada, sort of in a joint venture between Tesla and Panasonic. However, new filings show that Tesla is going to start making 4680 battery cells at Fremont. Filed and signed by Tesla on the 30th of August, the permit is labeled as a Tesla F210391ACTA battery B build. Gee, that's a long-winded, that's a long-winded name right there. But anyhow. New battery manufacturing equipment line on second floor of main assembly building. This permit application relates to the module portion of the line. The project is valued at 1.5 million US dollars. It seems like a pretty small sum of money to set up a battery manufacturing line, in my opinion. However, another application reveals a 1.3 million project that includes the installation of new maintenance office, a storage area, production cells, equipment for food, fender and trunk lids, and offline cell manufacturing equipment. And that, all that stuff is going to be on the first floor underneath where the battery manufacturing line is going in. So you can see, not only are they putting in a battery manufacturing line, they're also putting in cell production on the first floor and then the battery manufacturing line on the second floor as well. To me, this is quite surprising considering the fact that Fremont factory is considered to be very, very spatially confined. What do I mean by that? Well, Adam Jonas actually visited the factory, right? I think it was back earlier this year. And he said it was very tight in terms of space. I mean, Tesla was basically using up all the space they could in the factory. And, you know, when YouTubers have visited the factory, they've shown and interviewed Elon, and Elon said, yeah, it's really tight here. We've had to do this. We've had to do that. We've had to do that. This, 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 and this. So I'm not sure how they've gotten all this space to build all this new stuff. But maybe it has something to do with when, prior to Morgan Stanley's visit to the Fremont factory, Elon actually said, Tesla was considering expanding Fremont significantly. Everyone thought he meant extend, expanding the factory, making the factory bigger, but I, maybe he didn't mean that. Maybe what he meant was expanding vehicle production, expanding battery production, or having battery production at the factory. What does this mean? It means that within probably six months, Tesla vehicles from Fremont will have 4680 battery cells. Which vehicles? I'm going to guess it'll be Model Ys using structural battery packs. I mean, it's the only possible scenario we can go with here. Tesla's not going to not use structural packs because that's basically how the 4680 battery cell is set up to work in a structural battery pack. So the question is here, how is Tesla going to start using structural packs when they don't currently? So the question is here, which vehicles and when will it actually happen? I don't actually know, but clearly... It's a definite that the Tesla Model Y will have 4680 cells, at least one variant of this vehicle, within the next six to eight months. 
frankly, I'm excited. You guys in California are probably going to have an op another option, another choice to buy these vehicles with these cells. Sandy Munro, you've seen what he said about them. He thinks that they are better than people are saying they are. A lot of people are criticizing them, saying they're not as good as you think. They're overrated. I think a big change is coming. I think you're going to find that Tesla will release a software update and unlock a lot more range out of those batteries, similar to the way that they did originally with 2170s. Remember when they increased range by 5%? I think you're going to see an increase of maybe 10% after six to 12 months of testing, validating those batteries, making sure everything is going well, the same thing will happen. So if you buy a 4680 battery cell equipped vehicle now, I think it's a good chance the same thing will happen to your vehicle within 12 months. So there's some exciting things going on at Tesla 4680 cells, 2170 cells, but what I'm personally more excited about than both of those chemistries, much more excited about, in fact, and what I believe is the future of Tesla vehicles are LFP cells, specifically LFP cells using a manganese cathode, which I believe Tesla is working on. No one's talking about this. I'm confident they're working on this. There are some key reasons why they have to be, some key reasons why it's integral and important, but there's also some key reasons why these cells will be in Tesla vehicles by the end of this year. And that comes down to CATL saying it's happening. Tesla's denying it. It's happening. Tesla's concerned that people are going to stop buying their Tesla Model Ys in China to wait for these new cells. So they're denying it, but it's going to happen. The Tesla Model 3, Model Y, both of them, both of those cars, by early next year, in my view, very, very likely to have CATL's new M3P batteries, which in my view changes the game for Tesla standard range vehicles. They'll no longer be standard range. There'll be something entirely different. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.